So we are into grand finals now. Wow. Hydraulics and Magical with the advantage against the Walter team crawling their way back out into the grand finals. Yeah, I'd like to ask you, uh, based off the initial couple of minutes in the game, what, what were the... Uh, how did that comeback happen? How was it orchestrated? Carefully. That was I mean, the okay, greatest... I mean, but... Specific it's... and non... Yes, like... Non-specific and, like, true answer, right? Like, they, they just kind of bided their time in a, in a sort of defensive play pattern that I really did not expect from them, especially not from Santa. It was also, like, the thing is... the big thing that was thrown at them early was that that explosion of all of the absolvers like mm -hmm. wiping out the base that was what did it because without that they didn't have a whole lot that was actually threatening them other than the damage caused by the economic harassment once that got taken out all they had to do was avoid losing their army for about five minutes while building up slowly and just yeah. holding ground because they had a stronger economy drago sacrificed their economy to make that attack happen and the lack of follow-up meant that team, the Walter team could just pull it back. Really well done by the Walter team, able to overcome that challenge and the aggression from their opponents. However, big challenge. The final boss of today's tournament, of course, will be uh, Team Magical Licks, Hydraulics and Magical, with the grand final side advantage. Um, yes. But overall, I mean, Dom, we're we're nearing. It's obviously the last tournament. Excuse me, last. That's not what I want to say. The last match of tonight's tournament. Um, and I'm so excited about how this patch has played out so far. Considering we've had it for like what, 48 hours, maybe a little bit more. These have been some yes. great matches. Yes, that's right. And the players were grinding it out. They really, they really got an yeah. idea what was going on. Yeah, some of these, some of these guys have been uh, in the lab for sure, both testing things solo, looking at the statistics provided, uh, then, and then obviously playing against themselves, both one v one and two v two. And yeah, Santa Scruffy, Magical Hydraulics, we're running it back. The uh, important thing to note here: best of five finals for grand finals with winner side because. Magical and Hydraulics, when they're earlier encounter, uh, they've got the 1-0 lead here. So it's essentially two games to win it for the blue team, blue teal, and then three games to win it for Team Walter, red and orange. We are getting the players in the lobby, so we should be able to launch in just a second. going to ask them yeah, uh, which map, map they want they want to go for. Yep. There we and go, Lost will Province. Be okay. Lost Province. Run it back. Run it back in the classic map. I mean, we're talking about Frontiers, but as far as maps that are still regularly played, Lost Province is the map. Uh, for those of you watching back at home, totally, totally doesn't particularly matter, but it's always fun for me to look at these. Uh, the seeding, I believe, is accurately predicted every single result so far. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, Hydra and Spotlight got fourth. No, nope, sorry. Bemnex got third. Walter team was seeded below Drago Bemnex. What? No, Walter team was seeded first. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong dang thing. Lol. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, Hydraulics Magical 2. Ah, that's accurate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fifth, if, got fifth, well, fourth, he got fourth, third, he got third. If Hydraulics Magical the... lose to, to the Walter team, then it will be accurate. Interesting. See how that goes? Yeah. I mean, they've got the. Only have to win two matches. Yeah, yeah. It's always a. Uh... It ultimately doesn't affect the actual outcome of the broadcast, right? But as admin, is Pillar banned or not? Uh, oops, sorry, I got a question. Oh, really yeah, question from question. players. Uh, is Pillar being banned? I have heard that there was a bug of some kind or interaction. I think it was position-based, and I do not know how it actually works. There's an so. issue where the hitbox of the pillar extends way too far from the pillar, and so units can't walk in a section of the world that's next to it. So it messes up a bunch of stuff. Oh, so it, uh, okay, it's a... There might be invulnerability issues as well. I'm not 100% sure, but that's the main, that is the main problem with bug. With the, sure. With pillar. Well, doing it live, do you think it's uh, acceptable to have it right now? I, I think it depends on whether or not it can be killed. Uh, I think we do not have a way to test that. So for now, we will say, nope, no pillar. Play it out okay. without it. 
All right, well, Walt Team going for double Orzum without Pillar. Let's we'll see what happens. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of a change, <laughs> considering the last few games we've seen from them. I wonder if they're going to try to go for the... Oh, they can't go for Pillar Rush, because Pillar Rush is illegal because of the... Because of the... Uh, we'll all allow them, just because we made that ruling okay. a little bit on the fly, yeah. uh, to repick portals, because otherwise that would, like... Yeah, well, they can just, just let us know if they want to. Be fair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or that's I guess interesting. they can just quit, and then we see there's zero resources, and then they have quit. Yep. Ultimately, it's much more important in this case to actually, like, let them have a somewhat enjoyable experience as opposed to be like, Ha, you locked in your pick, suckers! Have fun not playing without your best ability! Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get a repick. Cool, cool, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, this is a good one. I, uh, I honestly... Like, I, I heard about the pillar bug today. I did not know its implications, and without being able to assess it myself and, like, talk with some of the other Sunspear folks about it, uh, it's definitely not a situation which, like, on the spot, uh, if the players have had consistent issues with it. Um, exactly. I, I, like I said, if it's, yeah. if it can be killed, then it's not the worst thing in the world, but if it can't be killed, then no. And I, it was already having issues with delaying how long it takes to get killed, and the hitbox mm -hmm, issues, mm -hmm. I haven't tested it yeah it is a it is of course called well. the break the game weekly tournament and that is the intense kind of to break the game and test it and right it's already and, broken it's already broken we already know right it's broken. It's in, a no in, punch, in the right? case of something like very clearly disrupting the play pattern or having unintended consequences um pretty pretty simple choice in my opinion yeah exactly. uh, i will say though in the spirit of transparency and openness if any of you guys think that's a bad decision uh hit me up over discord i guess like yeah I'd be interested in hearing it's why. Double Ajari. Okay, cool. Double Mal versus Double Ajari. Ooh. Okay. So, uh. Oh my oh, god. Yeah, Dominic. That's. Yep. Here it is. It is. Legion Hall Rush. I guess they would have wanted to do that with Zentari Pillar Push, see if it could still work. Oh, that's... but it's going to be spotted. This is so. The Scout sees it. Scout yeah, sees that... both. The scout sees both. Oh boy. They know. Hydraulics and Magical. They see it coming. Okay. Does this Read change their plans or was this early Legion? Nope. Uh. Nope, <laughs> it's the Legion Hall's up. Everything's huh. going. This is uh, yeah, nothing, nothing's changing. I'm wrapping my head around this, and the the numbers do not add up. Um, I can't. I don't know what to tell you, but we've been waiting be for fair. something crazy from Santa and Scruffy. We are getting that because they're going hard with. Oh my God! Legion no Hall way. Push. This is how you apply. So, Wait, what? it's gonna work. Symbiotes hurt so bad. Let's go, Symbiotes. Workers unite. They're unionized. <laughs> They're on the attack. Oh, symbiotes are oh. terrible. I mean, workers are actually really strong in this game. Yeah, yeah they get yeah. underrated because I don't think you can easily... F I mean, you can see what their attack value is by clicking on them, but no one bothers to check. But yeah, oh they, my are, oh my they are terrifying. They're strong. doubling down! What is Forcing this Forcing Scruffy to rebuild, in fact. Canceling out what all of the Sapari that are being built from there. Going for the next one. What is going on? What is going on is a well-oiled machine defending this attack. This is, this is a well-oiled machine defending the dance of a thousand monkeys. And yes, you might be well-oiled, but I don't oh, know. Have wait, you ever met a monkey oh. that you can control? I've never met a monkey, thankfully. I, I wouldn't want to, honestly. I think that would be... I feel like that'd be dangerous to my life. And, or to my, wait, this yeah. is actually working. Oh. All right, Santa Claus and Scruffy. You know, personally, I'm not in the church of Walter. Uh, you guys are the representatives of the Walter team, and I'm not suggesting that if you win this game that I will convert, but I will well, they're admit making a there they're may making be a strong some argument. truth what, Yeah, there, 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 there may be some truth in what they're preaching. <laughs> I love the I mean, fact that uh, it's working out for them. Oh, both expansions are gone. I mean, the just three. Yeah, okay. Two Legion Hall for oh. Scruffy, three for Santa Claus. Just, who needs Pillar when you just keep building units right at your opponent's base? My god. Even with reduced production, how about that? People ask me, like, build variety, early game, immortal, what's it like? Is cheese viable? Uh, your answer? Uh, it's right wrong. here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, your answer is, uh, is right in front of you. Does this look like cheese? It looks like cheese to me. Definitely smells like it. Reeks of cheese. They have yet to go for a second base because their opponent has neither. Well, they did, but they don't have one yeah, either, well, so. They unwind. Rocket. Yep. 
So this is actually a really cool time to note that Sapari have a really interesting mechanic where they have like the extended range. Uh, they can, one line of Sapari behind another line can actually push their spears over their teammates and like get that additional melee range. So yes, they're melee, but they're fast and they have that extra boost. And uh, we'll see how this plays out in the fights. Okay, we're getting some Kittle up here. Ooh. That's a solid move from Magical and Hydra. Is it? It might oh, be, it but it's... like... I mean, every unit that dies becomes a Kittle, uh... so it's one more thing for the Spire yeah, to deal with. Nice. Okay, okay. It's well more frontliners well to deal with. The Mass Hunters get a lot of damage in. The Sapari are being torn apart. And once again, yeah, dropping another apart. Red Harvest. And the turret that they placed, that uh, Team Walter placed in the center of the enemy's bases... Uh, has been completed, but took a lot of damage. I do think this is probably going to be a successful defense for Mice, but we'll see. Well, it's just, it, they've they've been recalled. Deliver from Evil was cast. This this attack is apparently still going on. That might be a, well. It's oh, there's reinforcements uh, coming in. Hey, folks. Unfortunately, as you can see, Mass Hunters from Magical have decided to uh, not move. Oh, yeah, that they, is because they crashed. he's crashed. Uh, which means one of the most dramatic openings we have seen in Immortal history in quite some time uh, will go to a rematch. Wow. That is alpha things. Yeah, I don't know yeah, that was, win um, this. Honestly, this is kind of either way. This was this is really I'm, rem I'm reminded of a scene in Back to the Future, Tom. Uh, yep. You know, you're, you might not be ready for it, but your kids will be, or your kids are going to love it, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, something to that effect. That's what that was, right? Like for us, for our eyes, for this generation of eyes, um, that 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 action, that fight, that game was simply too much. We could not appreciate the glory to the end. Uh, so we will restart the match, get everyone else out, and uh, go again. Yeah, that was that was worth. It. I mean, we had the bit. I just love this bit here, where it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna throw the mala. Like the turnaround that was coming from Hydraulics and Magical right before Dude, uh, Magical crashed with, yeah, with Ghost Mala. Yeah, like I said, it's just, here you go. There's the there's the recall or there's the deliver from evil. It's it was, it was solid. They had they had the position they needed. Yeah, it was. Uh... Oh well, I'm I'm struggling to find words, which is funny because I'm supposed supposed to be casting, but that is, the way it played out was both like yes you can detail what actually happened on the other hand though it was so incredibly creative holy shit man that was something else yeah uh, the I... question is, are they gonna try it again or like any variation of that like i don't know I, you never know with these guys exactly it's it, it been and we've seen before the no mix-up mix-up coming out from santa literally right we've seen that like several times 30 minutes ago <laughs> yeah yeah so, uh, like bring it back. Game, or it says game two, and it's like, are they going to do something different? No. No, they're gonna, they're the exact same cheese. Right. I mean, you know what? Other than the use of Mala, that actually wasn't a bad move. I mean, it was a decent punish against a, a fast expansion. I also want to note the fact that uh, going back into this match, um, we're playing it back from the beginning, right? So obviously yes. very early crash, no clear winner. Um, the Immortals that were picked were going to have the players be choosing again to replicate literally the same game state. Yep. Um, which makes, like, like it squares the potential of the no mix-up mix-up, right? <laughs> because Ajari, after this patch especially, has so many tools to work with. Uh, we could see Scruffy and Santa go for the cheese again, or we could see um, them it keep looks it like standard. It's yeah, no, it's, it's going to be standard. Okay, They're okay. not going to risk it. But now their opponents are, are going to be wondering what's going to go on. It's going to be a little bit maybe delayed fast expansion. No well, early ether. Although ether expo isn't unusual these days, but double ether. Ooh, I don't know. Magical's magical's playing it safe. They don't see the workers yet though. So no reason necessarily to think that it's a risk. But they're playing it safe. Yep, they're uh, double ether early. Looks like either across the board, except for Hydraulics, who has opted instead to go for his second exp or his second base, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. essentially as soon as he could. Um, but overall, like you said, the, the real cheese, I mean, we see this like somewhat forward Legion Hall from Scruffy. Uh, yeah. However, this actually harkens me back to like eight months ago or something where Legion Halls were 
kind of typically placed around this area. Uh, it's not really cheesy, right? It's not even a proxy no, or a no, floor this base. A, it's, it's, yeah. This is just taking advantage of the fact that you have a tower here. Yep, just a little bit out there. When I mean, we've seen before, it's a bit risky, too, because you put it out there, your defender's advantage is weaker, but you have better map control. So it's a trade-off. Right. Yeah, and uh, on some of the other maps, uh, as well as Lost Province, occasionally we might see like really creative stuff where you put the base on the outskirts of the... Um, the radius of the turret, right? So it's like hollowed mm -hmm. ground overlapping with hollowed ground overlapping with hollowed ground. Uh, but in this case, they're going instead for the protection that the turret provides. You can see that blue T bot so, uh, is going to get out because. Oh, go ahead. I was. I'm just. I remember I talked at the beginning of the turn of the whole tournament stream how because of the production change, it's very much more viable to have multiple production structures built up simultaneously. Yeah. Santa, there you go. Well, okay, Santa and Scruffy together, but still, that's. You got Scruffy doing all that. You got Santa doing that on top of having a few things at home. Like, both players really get this production structure a lot faster than you would have seen previously. Yeah. It's funny, too. Um, something cute, annoying, but not really majorly impactful that Scruffy did was the classic moat pull, right? To proc the neutral turrets to make it aggro at the enemy base on the second uh, base from uh, Magical. Yep. I don't think it's that worker's going to stick oh, around no. much longer. If he is, he's in trouble. What? No? Uh, this one? Turrets don't attack workers. That's part of the reason well, why most general, work, the, the and also the right? defense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but the Scruffy's yeah. got his uh, mode up here. I, I don't think it's actually going to be played into any actionable, like, cheese or, oh, or structure. Oh, this but... mode. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Sorry, I'm swapping between um, the two I, zero viewpoints we've got. I'm actually really curious what's going to happen with this. I agree that it looks like it probably just came out there because it was close enough. At the same yep. time... We did see in the last well, the, game uh, that pushing lesion halls into your opponent's mm. base is a remarkably st strong strategy. Two absolvers set up turret. This defense has not been put down by hydraulics yet, and they are so good, these absolvers, at wailing on structures. This is dangerous. And the expansion is looking great. Four magical. absolvers or, coming in. Yeah, this? look at the oh. RB value. It's not there. I can't defend this right now. Where's the supply, though? Okay, so they do have a resonance coming in. So unfortunately, that expansion is going to go down. The second one from Magical. Also, it's doomed. Resonance are on the way, but you got to be careful. You cannot use the resonance too soon. Otherwise, you're going to lose them. I Dom, I feel like we're having deja vu. This is like exactly not the same thing we've seen last game. But somehow, some... It's like, what? Double what? Ajari Aggression. Double Ajari Aggression. Double Ajari is Aggression. It's here, Fast folks. Expand. Fast Expand may no longer be a free strategy on Lost Province. 90% of this tournament today, we have seen the story of the Aru and their residence. And all of a sudden, in the grand finals, we have seen two, not one, but two variations of early Ajari play. Of just, if, the, if you can't beat them, go back in time and kill their parents. Yeah, that's, I've heard that too. You know, that's a, that's a common saying uh, in, in certain parts of the world. Oh yeah, classic. Yep. Uh, Parts of the we'll world are a little or not, bit uh, detached from reality, but, you know, that's paradoxes yeah. do that to you. Uh, that, honestly, true yeah. statement ever not said. Uh, now, there is a weird base. Not weird, I should say, but there's an interesting base placed by Magic on the bottom left. Um, it's a risky base to place there if you cannot control vision. And right now, they uh, haven't done the greatest job of stopping the enemy vision, but it is safe for the moment. Yeah, they have, they have some, they have knowledge. It's just that now it's map control for Team Ice is starting to become a threat. The party are coming in and they scout. So oh, big fight, big fight. Okay, haven't seen just hopping on at the same time as the Red Harvest. And is that that's not gonna be enough? The Absolver oh, didn't see. Boy, which... that's sure a lot that. of resonance. That's that is yeah. the resonant power coming in. Because they they have been born, so now you have to deal with them directly. You you can't you can't break the universe to stop them from happening. Yep, that's how it works. Uh, one single fly guy up there. Uh, probably not going to do much to work on these multiple no. bass hunters. From a single both fly guy, no. The safari inside of Hydraulics's base, maybe. Maybe yeah. That right. This entire time, there's been two safari just being super aggressive and super annoying. Might actually be enough. Evans Aegis has been popped by Scruffy, but. Really not able to match up against the range, the range of the resonance. So can 
this uh, warden hit the resonance, can the mass hunters protect them? And can the resonance snipe off the enemy units? I think the answer Let's to all the questions is yes. Yes? Well, I mean, right, it just depends on the micro. That's what we gotta find out. And there is another absolver taken down. They can't, they can't approach. There's the church going down. The production structures are getting knocked out. The Sapari were taken care of as well, so that base is safe. Now Goodbye, the turret, turret going down means they can just go ham. This this entire production line is vulnerable. There is yep. nothing protecting it other than some Sapari, which, well, the residents don't care. Yeah, the Sapari are going to suffer heavy casualties if they sprint into the uh, sieged up enemy residents. And, oh, this is awkward. Oh, I want to point out a pretty important note here. Uh, previously, there was a pretty frustrating bug where you could no longer... Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, retreat forced away from scruffy here but he's gonna lose an absolver for it he might go for this base set up by magical but i don't even know if he's gonna get there in time well they got the option they they do see it they are going for it and the defenses are on the way do they have enough for deliver from evil i don't think they do suicide mission on the part of the party but it's for a good cause yeah the adjusted or, values here uh, they, they do have enough the, oh, uh, it's, okay, right, yep. it's still 50. It is still 50. Yep, yep. Coming through, and there you go. Able wasn't to pick the I, moats. Part of me thought that it uh, had been bumped up to 75. Yeah, yeah, initially it was there. Uh, but look at that, another line of Sapari just destroying, taking out half the symbiote line of Hydraulics, and once again, forcing the response from the enemy team. Hydraulics and Magical have the arguably stronger army here, but they're not able to make it happen. Oh, it looks and, like uh, Scruffy hmm. crash. Dang, what a bummer. So, eight minutes into the game. Uh, once again, we've got a crash. Apologize for that, folks, but, you know, hashtag just alpha things. Uh, but we will get these guys into the game three. That seemed incredibly even to me. Uh, definitely past yep. the threshold of we're going to run it back. Same Immortals, same map. Technically, game one. One team is 1-0. And literally, game three. Just tell me what the score is. Because your parent is up to you now. 1-0 lead with uh, the third game to play. Okay. I'm curious. That uh, is the scoreboard. Yep, yep. I'm curious if, if there was any descriptive thing we can find there, because there's been two different players so far. Uh, check, folks. Uh, two different players actually crashed. Some yeah. played, or like in different moments. Like that were, There didn't seem to be one catalyst. So I'm not sure. Maybe. Oh, I'm trying to think here. I was thinking maybe but, something to do with one of Mal's abilities, but we've seen those work out no problem. It'd be interesting why it target or like if that is the case, right? And it's replicable. Replicable. Why is it hitting one person in one game than one in the other? But uh, regardless, we're gonna play it back one more time from this position. If we continue to run into some kind of error in this case, uh, the play would be to uh, change Immortals slash map. So let's yeah. see. Lost problems. All right. Kind of a interesting situation, right? Because it's a bit of a bummer. Kind of slows the roll a little bit, but lets us reflect uh, on today and the entire event. Uh, because the tournament itself has had very reasonable performance. I feel uh, you're right. This is the first time we've had ones. major crash bugs affecting yeah, the yeah. this tournament, which is again alpha things. Don't don't right, get right. us wrong. Yep. This is an alpha thing thing, but it's definitely gotten a lot more stable than it had been. Right. Like, it, is it? acceptable in the context of like a you know serious Full competitive release? event no. no absolutely not it's it's alpha however compared to normal yes we've even seen some performance lag when it was 2v2 and high uh army count right but overall it's actually been pretty reasonable especially when you consider the multiple different uh physical locations of players again the work from toby to i think toby and harry both to make definitely toby to get the performance working well at large at high pings has yeah. paid off very good stuff to toby and just all the tech team for improving as we go and uh finding some ways to make that experience smoother and uh let's see now so third time's the charm right we are back and the bases are that is a saying <laughs> actually yeah we finally found one 
Uh, in this case, it looks like the bases are actually being developed in a fairly traditional macro way. I'm going to hold judgment until we see what happens on this tower. Because we saw the expansions <laughs> last time, and then we saw construction of the tower, and then we saw more okay. construction of the tower, and then we saw two dozen supported by four absolvers walk into the base and yeah, start so, making it their own. Right, right. I'm not suggesting that we're not in for a while to ride it, but it, it is interesting, right, that every time we've seen a different rollout, and this time it does look like uh, something you might expect more from traditional uh, players who don't really dabble into creative openings and cheese. Yeah. Well, that's the exact thing that we're. I mean, this is the this is the direction you'd kind of expect just from the fact that they're playing. You know, they're mm. they're playing, and then they play each other, kind of realize, okay, this is what you're doing, so they change up a little bit, and then and change up again because it doesn't quite work. Because let's be honest, Santa and Scruffy have not been able to make that offense completely win in the game early enough. Yeah, because yeah. Because both times, like if they had if it had worked, even with the crashes, we would have called it in their favor. But it was even whenever the game crashed, despite the heavy aggression. So it's defensible. And Hydraulics and Magical were defending right. against it well enough that we couldn't call the game. Considering the tournament is, right now, as we're playing this today, is in a completely no-stakes sort of situation other than competitive pride. Um, sort of the, the, the burden of proof, right, that the tournament or the game that crashes was in one player's favor is particularly high. Um, and yes, we saw some very strong blows from Santa and Scruffy. But they really weren't able to. Oh my God! Cement that and finish it out, right? Um, so, <laughs> okay. so in game three. Yep. There's still. Oh, okay. It's just, yeah. it's just the, throw all the, the shoes at the, the wall. Eventually, the eventually, one last, of them people. will get you a win or a loss. But either way, one of them will get you a finished game. Three minutes. That's as much time as you have playing a normal traditional game against Team Team uh, Team Walter. Well, it was a good three minutes while it lasted. But now we get Scepter uh -oh. Harass from... Oh, no, that's Scepter Harass. Uh -oh. The Warden Harass. This is kind of a problem, though. There's actually not that did many Sapari for in? obvious reasons. Did they... I think... I think Magical Hydraulics clued in that something was up. Either there's cheese yeah, I don't or think actually, just a vulnerability. There's an opening. This this feels like a really strong read. Uh, they didn't actually see the buildings being created. However, no, it's just knowing push. their opponents so well... Yeah, they go for the aggressive timing push. Find no resistance. In fact, their opponent backtracked. Set up the turret, then instantly canceled it, and they are going to get a huge lead from this. They got, they're on a clock, however. Thrones are on the way, not wardens. Thrones, bearer of the crowns, oh being set, set up in a twelve o'clock base. And the clock is going to be harder for them to to actually work away from. Though the scout does spot everything. They okay, they know. Hydraulics and magical are fully aware of what's going on. They've taken out the expansion. Yep. They're not going to worry about wiping out the Acropolises and winning that way. If they take out the Angelaria before the bearers of the crown come up well there's not a whole lot that can be done and that's yeah, exactly what uh, they're gonna do. also look at the scouting beautiful making sure to cross uh every t and dot every i ear is team ice they sent the teapot obviously scouted all these structures i don't think a single throne is going to be completed in time and that might not force the gg instantly but dominic i think that might as well just be the game if not santa and scruffy are do they have anything else that they're slaying? I mean, they've yeah, they're legends, but no, they're they're brave. It's it'd be a brave play. It's I'm doing the math. This is thousands of resources gone, right? And they lost their bases. So 750 that's, that's, alloy and 240 ether for the production structures alone. I mean, between the two players, yeah. but still. Yeah, yeah, and then and then the uh, the, the, the the bearers of the crown. Home that's bases another, back like, home and thing. Yep. and the home bases as well. It's another 700. So yeah, that's. That Boy. is not easily recovered from. No, and of not course at the all. expansion, the third expansion coming out from Hydraulics, and the fatal error. What the? Wow. Okay. Now uh, I had a fatal error, and it sounds like you did too. Yeah. Everyone blew up. Everyone Ooh, blew up. That okay, was third. over four out of six people fatal error. Oh, wait, shit. Where's the? Uh, where's the it thing? does sound like Scruffy though is willing to give the we win are... over right to. Except the loss. Okay, yes. All right, yeah, because it is pretty much the advantage. Just looking and, at the, yep. the state Both here. teams agree. Uh, admin agrees. That seems entirely reasonable. There was yep. and we have, hardly we a chance to come the... back. Yeah, so, like three, three bases against one base each. And the armor value advantage. They had no armor value whatsoever. 
They had lost all the production. Yeah, okay. All right. Good. Um, I'm going to make a ruling here. A uh, bit of a gut call. I don't want us to play in Lincoln Park. Lost Province. Uh, just because we've... I don't know. We've never seen Ajari Ajari Mala Mala, but... Uh, just just to try and like mix yep. things up and yep. give the game a better chance of playing it out. Uh, I like but that. We will take that as a 2-0 lead so far for Team Ice. Uh, really sorry everyone okay. for the crashes. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. They got oh, a reverse Simus, now, Thank you for getting a sub gifted to you. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that guy's slick. That guy's slick. Yeah. Nice one, slick. <laughs> we really appreciate that. All right, uh, and I think uh, Slick had also mentioned that the he was one of the folks I was interested in um, having a key, and I believe you're giving uh, you're giving a few away, right? I am giving keys away. away. Awesome. I am giving keys away, so anyone who wants to key, just hit the exclamation mark key in the chat when the raffle's going on, which is most of the time. I apologize; it will not tell you if you have signed up, but you have signed up. Got to figure out a way of dealing with that. I'm pretty sure Crash when you deliver evil from Teapot. Suggest I remember before the crash. Oh, that, that's an interesting theory. Uh, as much as I do like speculation about the bugs, ultimately not really particularly relevant to this game, this broadcast right now. I mean, don't um, maybe don't deliver from evil teapots. Yeah, we'll see if the players Just for now, like the four of them, can keep that in mind. Uh, and anyone, if you actually experience that, of course, uh, join our Discord. We have a very active community and bug reporting section where we would love to get your game logs. Uh, and your feedback on pretty much everything regarding Immortal. Uh, but for now, folks, welcome to game. Welcome to the winners uh, match point to Magical and Hydraulics and a reverse sweep on the plate for Santa and Scruffy if they'd like to win this game, win this match and this tournament. So that's kind of a mountain dumb. Don't know if they can do it. And we're about to find out. They've like... I hate to say it, but they crashes aside. They did have three cheese games, which got they got rebuffed each time. Yeah, yeah. So I think that third game was definitely tall definitive, right? Con yeah, considering their their general approach, uh, the mountain is going to be quite daunting. It begs a very important question here: Do you uh, stick to a traditional, more macro game with very little cheese derivatives? Especially because it's a larger map, which can make that a little bit harder to do. Or because it's a different map. It's definitely different immortals, right? No longer uh mirror versus mirror. Oh yeah, it's just it's there's no no one can actually deliver from evil a teapot in this game. Yeah, it's a whole new ball game ball game now. It's also the comfort picks they've been using before. True, very, very true. Cause the Jari thing was coming out from an attempt to do double orzum push, probably pillar push with Antari to get what they could. I mean you can't do it as fast, but you could still do a pillar push. It's just more room for your opponent to defend. Mm. But now we're seeing them going back to what maybe a more normal-ish style for them. You know, as normal as they can get. Mm -hmm. And this is where Hydraulics and Magical did win 2-1. Both this map and also this matchup. Yeah, I mean, we have seen... Uh... Team Walter uh, show that they can, like, strike back, you know? Yep. Take some blood from their enemy. But they haven't actually been able to land the win. So it's that consistency that we're looking for here if they want to make this comeback happen. On the other hand, Magical and Hydraulics uh, pretty much throughout have shown a fairly consistent style of play. And it's been incredibly effective for them throughout the day, throughout the tournament. So I honestly, like, given that, I do expect I, I am going to call Hydraulics Magical the favorite. It's going to be an upset for the Walter team mm -hmm. to win this. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tifa's setting up as per usual. The first couple of moments, typically an immortal at the time, are fairly dormant. I don't really see anything particularly spicy. Uh, Early God Heart. So Santa Claus not focusing on altar units. While Scruffy getting a few bone stalkers to provide a little bit of protection. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, that kind of plays into the resonant style that we've seen pretty heavily from them today, huh? Oh. <gasps> exactly. Same thing from Hydraulics. Santa. Then, where... There's some mass hunters, but that's about it. Look at the right of the map. Santa, where is that symbiote going? Santa? 
<laughs> it's been spotted that the Santa? masked hunters were shooting at it, weren't they? Uh, they did not shoot at it, but they. I'm. If it wasn't envisioned, it was like by a hair. Like, right. It. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly okay. a risk that Santa's playing this bait putting the space there and it's not yep. surprising and it's so far not answered if it works though that's it's a significant big. advantage oh yeah very that's most of their economy really Anything. man that uh does remind me of certain moments especially if you're newer to rts you keep fighting the opponent you keep grinding them down you think you're winning you think you're winning and you're like where the heck are their bases right and then they have some random ass proxy like a bajillion miles away. That's Santa Claus is pulling that right here. Yeah, they are. Ooh, they wait, are Scruffy got cut out. You saw that, right? I... Scruffy, Scruffy sent a one symbiote to the west. However, it was not able to set up before it was answered by the Bone Stalkers. So I'm wondering, what they does clued in? Ice do? They've clued. Like... No, have they clued in? Have they clued in? Right, like it's maybe, like looking like they. Oh, they have hydraulics. Oh, I can't tell. No, I don't think they have. I, ah, ooh, ah, okay. I yeah. mean, just double oh, check. Boy. Why not? Oh, the timing's going to be bad, Santa. You better cancel this fast. It's got a little bit of time to cancel this, but there's no way to defend it. There's no army. Yep. Okay, the cancel happens. Santa does not get the hidden expansion. Oh, and boy. Magical yes. with their third already, and they're they're not getting the fourth quite yet, but they could anytime. Just set up This is so kill. problematic, I feel, because ultimately we've seen... You give Team Ice an inch, they get the whole damn mile, Dominic. And already a couple of inches back and forth. Yes, the cancel came through for Santa, but you don't get refunded all of that. I think it's like 60 or 70%. Um, and that's timing, right? That is a delay. Oh, the bigger thing is the timing. Yeah, it's such a delay to your strength. I mean, the safer third is being built out for Santa, but again, Magical's almost done theirs. Scruffy getting their third. But Drago's, sorry, Hydraulics is almost done theirs, or halfway done theirs. Okay, so uh, we see actually a flock of thrums has arrived from both Santa and Scruffy. Built up, pretty expensive, pretty powerful, no dedicated anti air yet. But the response is, is okay, set up Erebors, that static D in the baseline. Will they be taken out though before the thrums are able to do that damage? I'm not entirely sure. And bone Stalkers are coming as well. Erebors, one of them's up. One okay. has gone up. There's a safe haven for the for the symbiote. Second one is ready as well. It's going to be taken out before getting too many kills. But hey, soft mm. the thrums. Yeah, and uh, interesting enough that the thrums decided to go for the destroying the protection, hunting by the erivores means they actually didn't do that much damage yet to the worker line. Uh, yet that... is an operative word. They've taken out half right. by now. Well, uh. I feel like, yeah, yeah, this this particular base in the center, right? The uh, immediate expansion for Hydraulics has definitely come under siege. But Aerox are the response from Hydraulics. How many kills can he get with a splash? Mm, it's, they're, they're not sure they can go for it. That's already 10. Oh, boy. That's a dozen thrums coming here from Scruffy. Santa Claus reinforcing as well. This is looking scary for Team Ice. Yeah, look at that. There's so many of them. Oh, boy. Oh, Aerox, come in! Have oh, them go down. Hits. Not enough to thin them all out, though, but there is a very low one. Can they get the passive from their own thrums? It doesn't look like it, but Bone Stalkers is the support. And more anti-air on the way. Oof. <laughs> ah, there they go. The Aerox finishing it up. Ooh. That's all of San is down. Scruffy still has their... Tw their... Tw their... Do yeah, so still thrums, has their dozen. there. But it's how long? Numbers are hard. Number words Can are they hard. Make number it number math is easy. Number words are just, <laughs> what? Uh man, this is an interesting situation. We can see Scruffy, his effective supply is higher, his effective army value is higher, although obviously much of that is con concentrated in the thrums. The long term economy of That's... Team Ice has been chugging along in the sense that they've made expansions, they have a lot of bases. But they ha they haven't actually had many like workers mining. No, you're right. They keep They're dying. Just, this one's still four. This one's all oh, right. Your team ice, sorry, team ice. Yeah, you're right. But also, team fire hasn't actually upgraded their bases as much either. It's still working on setting up the whole thing. So. Oh my lord! Look at this fight. There's so many thrums. 
so many masked hunters, and the Thrums cannot easily, or will not easily deal with that. Oh, the Dark Stalkers! Dark's coming in! Big damage. Can they get the kills, though? That's a lot of low HP bars, but it doesn't look like the finishing blows will land on most of the Thrums, so a little bit of a waste there. Still, that's Hydraulics and Magical able to stabilize. Santa Claus lost all of their Thrums, had to rebuild, switch to Mass Hunters. The advantage isn't there. They do have the alloy or that double ether in the southeast. Man, but they this don't is such have an interesting the game. Air so magical and hydraulics, they can stabilize, and they are. They are, they are indeed. But the game feels as if it's being played on a tightrope. Were it for a little bit of weaker micro overall, potentially uh, Santa and Scruffy, that would give them the edge to take everything here. You can see Santa and Scruffy are still committed to their harass. However, in general, their forces have been dwindling overall. Ability used. The Keetle have been spawning. Not enough anti-air to push this large mass of Thrums away. So, once again, the retreat. However, Thrums not able to push much farther. Let me see if there's any, anything around here. But it looks like just Thrums coming from Hydraulics is the answer. Which is... That is an answer. Ooh. Also, I uh... mean, well, as well, possibly some harassment. Bone stalker, there's a 9 o'clock base. Yeah, there's a 9 o'clock base that's been under heavy threat, but it's not going to go down. It goes to about half before it looks like Magical will commit his Bone Stalkers, uh, put them into two different forces. Most of them retreat. A couple of them did Same build the uh, worker line. So. Same time, though, we have Santa Claus coming in oh, at the man. third for Hydraulics. Once again, Hydraulics struggling to defend against this, but uh, Magical able to save the day. Omnivore as well comes in to provide that little extra bit of firepower. And then back up at the 12 o'clock base, the Bone Stalker Mass supported by this giant group of Thrums just decimating the forces of Magical, forcing out a response. But will the units get there in time to overall defend? I feel like they're going to get a couple of units out of the way. The Bone Stalkers here from uh, Scruffy might be dead, but the space, yep, gets to defend it in time. Is that going to be... Is that going to be a position that Magical and Hydra Olix can build back from? Because this is looking Hold like... Hold up. Okay. This is... Santa? This okay. is just... I mean, okay, look at the actual... Look at the map control now. Like, this is... I feel like we're playing, like, spectator, caster, observer, whack-a-mole. <laughs> pretty much. For the amount of time Every things keep seconds, bouncing around. Corner. Yeah. I do really like these thrums because they are... We've seen resonance come up a lot. Magical has argued specifically mm -hmm. that Resonance are yeah. pretty much the, the, the unit for Aru. Thrums, just deal with them. A very good read on the meta of today's tournament. Uh, the question is, oh my god, I think I found the answer. What do you do after that read? And for the Santa... Blood oh baby, not a unit we see typically. Uh, and Dominic, you Santa you... play? <laughs> well... From Santa, maybe, but could you maybe explain yeah. why we don't see folks other than Santa experiment with these units? With because Bloodbounds are really frail. They deal a ton of damage, can jump, can leap <laughs> over, and just get in the back lines and kill stuff. But they go down in basically two shots from anybody. Gotcha. So high risk, high reward. Sounds about right. Yep, that's Santa. Oh, and the Icor's in the corner, just once again taking out the symbiote line. <laughs> once again, the Thrums presenting a problem. Oh, and the Icar Greet Squad. There are multiple groups of Bone Stalkers just raining havoc on either side of the map. I want to focus on the northern side at this midnight base. Uh, actually kind of an even army when all things considered, but the defensive advantage, of course, the ice, and that will be enough to handily win because they were essentially 2v1. But that means it's a sacrifice of the bottom right corner base uh, where there's, or excuse me, the army there that was attacking the base, not the base itself. And no, somehow we, we keep returning to neutral game. We've got action in like three quarters every 30 seconds. That lasts like five seconds. And then back to neutral. I'm thinking it's worth looking at the numbers, though. Yes, we're back to neutral in terms of the aggression. But Santa has a huge army value, huge supply. A lot of yep. his blood bound, to be fair. That yep. could go down immediately with one bit of bad micro. But yeah, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's oh, risky, but it is stronger it? for now. However, he's committing it. Oh no! Uh, oh no! Hydraulics. Santa the rain of blood. But hydraulics does have the red harvest in there, so they're getting all the kittle to their advantage. It's making it that much harder to hold the attack. And Team Fire gets 
pretty well pushed back completely. The Thrum's also going down gradually, but it's enough. Scruffy Force retreats. Santa Claus hey. losing everything, going from the biggest army to the hey. smallest yeah. in an hey, instant. Dominic. What happened? We had a big number, and now it's a tiny number. And well, what happened is that, if you, like, looking here, oh. what happened basically was Mala with the Kittle. That's what happened. Yeah. The fact that Hydraulics yeah. basically pulled out the Red Harvest did the trick. Oh, man. This is crazy. And look at that. More aggression. Just unrelenting. First, it's four Bone Stalkers on the Western base, and now it's a giant dual pronged army on the bottom right hand side. This base is surely not long for this world. We might see an attempt to defend it here, but I think Santa Claus is going to signal the retreat while instead Scruffy attacks this. Uh, 12 o'clock once more. For what it's worth, they only have... They still have the 12... The 12 thrones, but the three Erevors here are not going to let them do much. Even if they get hits in, it's at a cost. Uh, they cannot get into range of anything without getting hit. And the southeast base goes down. So Santa yep. Claus back down to their third... The, well, the safe plateau bases, which are pretty close to running out. Well, certainly the, the main and the third are 1,600 away, and that's about five minutes left. A little bit of a skirmish here. Back and forth, back and forth. The blood bounds just I love, there's one of the sickest units in the game by far. Uh just due to the animation and oh, oh wow. Great, great hunt. hunt and the potential flank. Potential flank, but I think they stuff it out. Yep. Still with great hunt being what it is. Oh the blood bound though. They have vision. They can go through, they can take out all the resonance. Another risk, another rain of blood. This time with no counter abilities from hydraulics, wow. but at the same time being pushed out of the healing circle. Yeah, Hydraulics still maintaining control along with Magical. And again, there's the Red Harvest. So Hydraulics once again maintaining the kittle advantage. This and is big for that, Walter team. It is big for Walter team. And actually, even despite all of these pushes, the Resonants are running out of steam. The Thrums are taking them out. This is a successful Reign of Blood attempt for Santa Claus. Getting the advantage and now Scruffy with significant army value lead. Team F Ice having to completely rebuild everything. Already kind of on the back foot in terms of, or kind of even on expansion, but now on the back foot, army-wise, the follow-up attack is happening. Scruffy and Santa Claus, Scruffy oh with the behemoths. They want yeah, to keep the space. Yeah, there's some static defense here, but uh, Team Walter smells blood in the water. They found the first definitive lead in this game so far, and they want to close it right here, right now. This base is not long for this world, ladies and gentlemen. And the question is, with a bajillion behemoths and the thrum flock still alive, can Scruffy take his team to victory? A tough question to answer considering the damage boosts that have been... Oh, boy. Or the damage amplifiers on their own units. This is... All of the air oh! coming in! Scruffy losing half the behemoth count. Still up. Still got some... Still a threat, but this is a much better position for Team Ice to work from. Another yep. Mark Prey dropping the behemoths once again. Have to worry about being hit too hard because of the damage boosts. This is oh, not man. a clear win for Team Fire. Not quite. Great Hunt has been cast. No vision now for Team Ice, so they are going to go on the retreat. Likely wise, given the situation. You gotta imagine, Aerox are probably being created now if they have the money to afford them. There are a couple of behemoths still low. In fact, most of Scruffy's army is pretty unhealthy, but they are still alive. However, retreat has been signaled for now. <laughs> The <laughs> blood bounding chased away by the symbiotes. Yeah, no, wait, this is, wait a second, is that how it works? <laughs> Actually, yes. Symbiotes, like I said, workers are really strong in this game. Well, if it's 4v1, for sure, yeah. But, uh, normally... oh, yeah. Okay, Santa Claus and Scruffy, they're going to get 75 pyre each from this. There's no contest. They're back up. They can get their, they can double, ra well, Reign of Blood and Great Hunt once again, once the cooldowns run out. I feel like the uh, this duo of Scruffy and Santa Claus, especially if they're able to win this game and carry their momentum forward, may have come into their own, with Santa Claus being the uh, comedian and then Scruffy being the cool guy, right? To yeah, the straight man. Play up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Look at that. Behemoths. The, the behemoths, man. They are no joke here. They aren't. They've partly been marked, but so, more so magicals. Another rain of blood drops for Santa Claus. And there is no dislodging them from that healing circle. It's just a retreat for Team Ice. Yeah, what an interesting game. Just looking at the stats alone, we've got Magical reasonably powerful compared to his teammate. 
Santa Claus, not that strong either, but uh, Zoles and Scruffy, excuse me, just a dominant army size in terms of overall power and supply. Simply attempting to choke out the life of Team Ice here. We see some multi prong attacks. Santa's still doing what he can with the blood bounds. But so far, the finishing blow has not been dealt. Still, as we uh, are near the 20 minute mark on this game, it is looking very difficult for Ice to come back here. It's just been They've too lost. much bleeding, too many holes in the ship. I know. They have. They have. Their main base is done. Their mm -hmm. expansions. I mean, Hydraulics didn't have any expansions except for this one in the front, and that's mm -hmm. under heavy siege. Also, why not chop a profit saver just to have the... Oh, are they going to get the worthy behemoths? Ooh, oh, not enough upgraded time. behemoths. Yeah. They don't manage, though. There you go. Despite that... Well, not despite that. Because of all that push, Walter team does take the game. They are on the board. They are on the board, which puts puts them at a 2-1 position. Remember, first of three, best of five. Um, What a game. I... I I want to kind of go back to the metaphor of the comedian versus the straight man, because ironically, both Santa and Scruffy played like with the exact sort of same opener, right? However, mm -hmm. the focus was on defending against Santa's push, where Scruffy's thrum kind of made it out of the live, right? Both through a, maybe a little bit of micro decision making and some concerted effort on the defense's part. Um, but that dynamic, Dom, that dynamic really seemed to work out for them. I think it did, but considering the way things played out, the straight man approach seemed to work a bit better. It's like straight man with some comedic spice. Right, right. Like that the, the, won uh, the game. Yeah, yeah. I think um, they both opened a little bit comedically, but like in in the end, that's sort of how it played out because uh, in, in a couple of moments, there's like weak side, top side, or sorry, strong side, weak side ideas where mm -hmm. you play for like your top lane versus your bot lane versus, right? Um, and that's. Not like exactly what we saw, but kind of what that game developed into, where one bit, person was yeah. more the the supportive role, the distracting role, the jester, and the other guy was like you know, straight up all business, uh, scaling up in a very powerful and ultimately insurmountable way. So um, next map pick is going to be embargo from hydraulics and magical, and I like this a lot, uh, with the caveat that I imagine they are probably the most practiced duo on this map, as it is typically our least commonly played map in the pool. Um, if that is accurate, then this will be a tough one for Drago and uh, well, Scruffy for, for sure. But... Santa, definitely tough for Drago having already oh, lost, but definitely for Santa and Scruffy for sure. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I, I, in my mind, I'd even, uh, I was about to say Drago and Bemnex. So I was like, wait a second. That's not right. Oh, yeah. It's impossible for them. Yeah. So They have no hope. Santa and Scruffy... Up in the embargo, momentum swings can be a really, really big, and for them to sort of continuously push through the multiple kind of starting and stopping and starting again due to the resets, um, I feel like... Oh, Hydraulic is playing with fire. Oh. Going for a jar. Oh, ha. Hmm. Or could you say he's playing with pyre? Yes. I'm sorry, I people. Mean, uh, I anyway. could, but that... But... <laughs> Look, we've been busy, all right? Well, ZK's been busy. <laughs> we love you, ZK. Hope you had a good day at work. So, yeah, you uh, did mention, though, that Hydraulics is going Ajari here. Which... I did. Which would normally be so dramatic, but considering the crash bugs, we have no idea what's going to happen now. Yeah, it's true. I mean, hey, that's that's not not necessarily a negative thing. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's in Walter's hands at this point. Uh... I do think it's very Please particular. Be. I don't think Hydraulics is the person who picks a pick like a, a counter pick embargo map and then the immortal Jari lightly. So we'll see what his plans are. Get get a significant advantage, then crash the game. Oh no. Not like this. Oh god, no, I think Santa Demon load in. Ooh. Oh no, they're, they're still loading. Uh this might be a visual. They're yep. good. They're good. Yep, yep. Alright. What is it? Shaders compiling or something? Yeah, that pre caching for the stuff. Yeah, so uh, here we go. Embargo. I, 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 I honestly, uh, just as a joke, it'd be kind of funny to be like, 
And ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the right of the plane, you will see the lovely embargo uh, centered on blah, 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 blah. The temperature is 60. I've been on a lot of flights recently, Dominic, so I don't know. Oh, why I yeah, that explains it. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right about the temperature being 26 Celsius and humidity being high where I'm at. But well, there you go. Uh, but yeah, as far that as was the last one, that was, on, that was on Fool's Bay. That was Fool's Bay, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I have no idea where embargo is, to be honest. All the folks. If you're interested in that at all for my guests, let me know and I'll, and I'll chat what with is, Dylan so we can get the uh, yeah, like it has tourist trees. destination highlight. It has trees and it has grass, so I'm assuming it's not Zer. Oh. It, it is fairly desolate, though. Uh, what is this What is this lake in the, right? This lake in the northern corner? Uh, northwest? Yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah, that's kind of like a weird lake of blood thing going on. <laughs> that's look like blood, right? Like... I mean, so Nuoth seems appropriate. Like, it's probably yeah. somewhere for Lakulathon's blood to just pool. It's, uh, there's a game called, what's it called? GeoGuessr, right? Oh, yep. The, the pros of that game are geniuses. Like, the amount of detail they can find out. We should play GeoGuessr on the world of creation. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, just don't play with Dylan. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, yes, because he created the universe, right? Like, yeah, exactly. That be, he, that's he even makes, a little bit unfair. In his he favor. referees. He referees. Yeah, there you go. Or he makes he makes the places, right? Yeah, that's a sort of. We can have Westopoly host. He's the trivia Jeopardy for uh, uh, I guess so. host. Yeah, yeah. So, hydraulics, Ajari. Cool. Sapari. It rhymes. We're keeping it going. And his Sapari are making a beeline towards what I'm assuming is going to be this pirate camp. And it's going to be relatively simple for him to take it. Um, no contest. There's yep. a tower right there. That's about it, which isn't going to do much. Towers, as you may have noticed, cannot move. That's crazy. At least not yet. I mean, oh boy. I'm assuming that's going to be the case forever. But a revolutionary new spin. <laughs> A revolutionary new spit on Tower's Defense. Towers, that move. <laughs> Tower Defense games will never be the same. Like, how about we have a Tower Defense game, except you can build a bunch of towers, but they all can move. And they all move at different speeds. And you know what? We'll give them activated abilities as well. I don't think people would play it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it, it, yeah. No. Sounds kind of boring. Nah, nah, too old of a style. Yeah. Kids wouldn't get it. Especially if you don't try and make it a social game. Maybe it'd work as a 1v1, you know? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't think that sort of thing would become like the biggest esport in yeah, the world for nah. a long period of time. That's nah. Also, uh shout outs to Twitch chat, totally not a boy, reminding us, uh, which of course we knew we were simply testing you, chat. Uh yeah, you can actually see the uh location of the planet or the moon of the locale picked in the Corner of the map select, you or uh, I believe when you load I too, don't right? know how accurate that is because I don't know if it always says nuance since it did initially for Lost Province. Or I think you know, anyway. Dom. I'm not gonna lie, that does sound like a bug. Like, that would probably that might like be I it, don't so. I don't know how accurate those those are. I mean, it's probably correct, but I yep. would take it with a grain of salt up until the point where all that stuff's finalized. Like once again, the beta, yeah, yeah. they'll probably be finalized enough that it's that you can. Oh yeah, use it. the polish will be there. But Ultimately, for now, it's like there's in, a lot of stuff that gets changed. A lot of stuff gets changed quickly, and just documentation gets changed a lot slower. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, if you have any specific questions when it comes to geography, location, region, etc., uh, ask the creative team, Dylan, Santa Donovan, Big John, and if you Santa have any questions, yep, about uh, Immortal Gates of Fire in our tournaments, uh, you are watching Break the Game, and as we are in alpha, and this is a patch that released in less than like three days ago. Sometimes the game is broken. Unfortunately, we just encountered a fatal error. We're going to have to run it back. Yeah, there was no advantage. No one's really done anything. That was a really... That was a really like, slow starting game. All right, well, bro, yeah, Scruffy, that was needs, Scruffy needs to break their bio. No worries. So, uh, Dom, if you'd like, we can just toss it to a quick two-minute break. Yeah, let's Otherwise... do that. So all right, folks. I just think we could right all back. use a bit of a break. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mortal Bay of the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 10. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, alongside Seamus, and we are into the last, well, last set of today's tournament. 
possibly the last game, depending on how this goes. Astral Magical and Hydraulics have the advantage of one game. So if they win this, it is their tournament. Otherwise, we are going to go to game five. Yep, match score currently sits at two to one. With uh, Hydraulics and Magical coming in through the winner's side, they initially won this uh, matchup earlier on the winner's bracket. So that gave them a one lead, one point lead, I should say. Uh, and then so far, East has taken one map. Um, we will not be seeing Ajari for the rest of the series. I uh, want to make sure we can keep things as consistent as possible with regards to performance. Um, so it's going to be essentially Zol or Bala. And yep. we're going to be playing it this fourth map out of five, uh, potentially, Dominic, on Embargo. That's which right. Which was not the map pick that the players wanted. What? Apparently. So we are... Uh, no, it's Embargo. They magical hydraulics asked for Embargo. Uh, they wanted to change map to Fool's Bay afterwards, though, because the uh, <sighs> they can't play Ajari right now. Just due to potential oh. crash. Okay, I didn't see that. No worries. Day is the epitome of just alpha things. Why is... Hang on. You're good. I know, I'm just trying to make sure I didn't accidentally alt F4 the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay. Fool's Bay it is. Okay, so, getting into it. Game number four. Just want to do it right. No problem. The, uh, overall ebb and flow, like, we were talking a little bit about that we, in these games that we've seen, um, hydraulics and Magical, obviously, the favorites at this point, just due to their record, I think it's fair to say. And yep. they are the expectant, more traditional style, less gimmicky, less cheesy, whatever word you want to use. Um, you know, more more uh, consistent play style. Uh, however, our most recent game that we just saw, Santa Claus and Scruffy were able to strike back, with Santa being a major distraction, and Scruffy slowly amassing enough forces to overwhelm. Uh, I'm curious to see whether we see that dynamic continue in this upcoming game. That's a good question, because the other possibility would be, you know, Hydraulics and Magical just finding ways to, I guess, be aggressive, take, stop. Like, the big thing is before, we didn't see Magical have the chance to really build up along the north side, which admittedly is a little harder in Fool's Bay than it was in Embargo. But still, mm -hmm. that, like, they didn't get that massive economic lead that they had gotten yeah we'll uh we'll see how this one plays out here folks as we get into it and typically the first minute and 45 really uh turrets are offline as well as the bastion protecting your main base are offline during that time so teapots have free rain uh, and especially in a map such as fool's bay uh especially suited for 2v2 gameplay. We're seeing pretty standard stuff across the board, right? In the early expansions. Oh, yeah. Fast uh -oh. expand, fast ether, probably production yep. coming yep. in soon afterwards. Oh, double ether coming in from Santa Claus. Okay. Oh, yeah, both players. They're going for late production. That's true across the board. Like, yep. With okay. With possible exception hydraulics? Hydraulics, what are you doing? Hydraulics go for early production. Okay, hydraulics is breaking the trend. Interesting. Yeah, it is breaking the trend. It's not breaking it in like an incredibly crazy way, I feel. Um, no, no, not that, not too much. You would expect that he goes for the second extractor soon, sooner rather than later, especially due to the fact that they do not actually need worker maintenance. And they effectively automate uh, themselves as soon as they are finished being created. Uh, but yeah, we see a couple of pings here. The pings coming out, Epod going through. Is able to make it. Uh, didn't actually scout out this expansion, but probably safe to assume that the expansion is there. Right, and that's something which this is normal. Like this is entirely this expansion pattern is the optimal expansion pattern. As I mentioned before, it's where you get six thousands. It's where you get where everything lasts as long as possible. So the players are probably just going to assume, just double check: Are you doing this, or are you going for a weird fast expand build, or sorry, weird no expand build? No one's doing. Everyone's kind of going for the same thing. Just a lot of, a lot of altars with neurocyte support. Yep, neurocyte for Santa. The only person I'm really not sure whether they go for the neurocyte. Interesting. And actually, Scruffy again breaking the trend, going for early Godheart. Probably gonna go for early Resonance. 
And going for... Okay, this is... We oh, okay, here's the real trend break. Scruffy with the Drago base. Over in the northwest. Yeah, that's... Uh... Magical going to clue in that that's where they need to go? It's a good question, right? Because we knew it was only a matter of time. Scruffy is going for the Drago-style base, right? This sort of board. It, it is... Technically not a proxy, right? It's not on the enemy side of the map, but it is like on the borderline. Yeah, it's, it's, to be it's seen, on though. the edge. Right, right. Um, and like Lady Gaga, potentially on the edge of glory, if it's able to stay alive for a very long time, get that value. Pyre attempts here. I do think that Orange will get it. Yep, that's scruffy, but at what at the cost? cost of all their bone stalkers? At the cost of all their bone stalkers. Yeah, there you go. Four four bone stalkers for one uh, Pyre camp, especially if the enemy has such a strong army. Might be pretty dangerous. Well, doubly so in that army is going in. I I was going to say, I think that it's going to be likely a lot of aggression from Magical and Hydraulics just to try to take out their opponents before they can get into that weird tricksy late game where they get the multi prong attacks. And mm. that's exactly what they're doing. Just go in hard, do not let up, and make sure their opponents cannot get a proper expansion going in. If you do that properly, then it works out fine. Driving the Red Harvest, getting that little health boost for oh, the Oh Yeah, this is gonna be rough. That's a dead expansion. Yeah, that it's is completely constructed that too, Scruffy, right? Scruffy's got the other one, so they're not totally dead in the water, but they they spent their money here. There is a teapot nearly uh it's gonna go wide though. But just barely. Yeah, so they lose this and the army is still pressing forward. Who's Mark Prey with? Okay, well both people had had Mark Prey at this point. And the Kittles are now Santa Clauses. Which is working out. Magical and Hydraulics forced to retreat. They cannot hold this attack thanks to the Red Harvest from Santa Claus. Reinforcements decent on the way. Defense there. Not much army. Yeah, the uh, economic advantage uh, kind of the economic pressure right, pushed in uh, favor of Team Ice. However, the army pressure overwhelmingly going in favor of Fire there as they were able to clear house with all of their units. Turn that into a pirate advantage, possibly turn that into getting rid of these rocks. And they're right there. And man, the um the this base has yet to be seen. And bases start at obviously uh secondary bases. Uh I think it's 36k, right? Or 38? Yep. 36. Uh yeah, 36, right? So chugging away. We'll see how long it lasts before it's discovered if it's able to mine completely. Well, Roms are on the board precise, for yeah. Scruffy. Sorry? 3.6, but yeah. The uh, Thrums now on the board and going to signal that there's going to need to be some kind of response. Hydraulics actually hasn't gone for the second ether. So I feel like, and I don't blame the players for this, maybe a little bit of fatigue setting in. Because f five minutes into the game, there's really no reason not to have the second extractor underway just because of the fact that it automates itself. I'm looking at it. I don't think that's a mistake. I genuinely don't. They're not, they don't have a lot of alloys or ether sinks. They have a okay. lot of alloy sinks in the form of their masked hunters. And again, it's pretty clear that Team Ice wants to be aggressive, wants to really keep applying military pressure while also having at least some defenses for things like Blood Bounce, like right now, because that's another mm -hmm. problem. I don't see that as being a mistake necessarily since, yeah, they just want to push hard. Eventually, they'll probably get the ether when they need it. But if you look at the numbers they have, they have enough ether. They can get the upgrades they need. They can get the units they need for now. Yeah, that's fair enough. You can uh, hear the screaming of the symbiotes as they are taken down by the harassment from Santa here. Thrums, meanwhile, from Scruffy. A lot of pressure being put across the map. I love to see this from the Walter team. They were able to take that early army advantage in the fight near their base, and now they're pushing it, and that is how you convert a lead into a victory. Their spawns from Hydraulics, a couple of Masked Hunters. They do have the offering available, so we will force them back for now, but still... Slowly poking away. Very slowly. And a second ether is up, but yeah, Hydraulics clearly they're going for offering mass hunters with maybe some Icor support. Like they have They are definitely going for just enough ether to get the upgrades they need. And then alloy as until they start needing to switch over to mid-game tech units. Same time, Magical just has gone hard into all resonance. Like resonant bone stalker. Mm. We've seen the we've seen Ooh. the power of that in the past, so it's a good move. Yep, it definitely is. It has a lot of power. Mass hunters versus thumbs. I'm not entirely sure which army bitch beats which at this point. Uh, um, I right on also with, on the upgrades with in just the past, offering. Though. Yeah, with just offering, I think it's a mm. bit even with offering and 
Was it Mother's Favor, I think? The additional it's, upgrade, right? Yeah, the second offering upgrade. It's I'm yep. pretty sure it's in Master Hunter's Favor. Oh, man. Committing to the arrow board here might not be a good call because there are Bone Stalkers on the way, but he can't see them just yet. Flies no, that's how the they work. <laughs> and is losing. Ah. Now that's how Bone Stalkers work. You cannot see them coming. Yeah, that's that's it, right? The uh, throb in the last game were really effective. Oh, they don't cancel. However, in this game, good answer so far. And yep, cancel there from uh, Team Fire aggressing, forcing the cancel out of Hydraulics. Hydraulics now trying to answer, though, in kind with a little bit of aggression. Nice route to prevent the Mass Hunters from their chase. It also seems like they've got their Nikes on. They're laced. Uh, those were fast Mass Hunters, so I believe the second upgrade is online. So from here now, it's a question of... Was this going to be just Hydraulics building up a ton of Masked Hunters, or are they going to be switching into tech units? Because right now, they're just not... They have supply, they have production capacity, they're focusing on something else. Focusing potentially on a re-expansion. Or... Ooh. What is this symbiote? Dangerous here. Oh, I see. Six. It's going to this expansion. Yep. The, uh... Expansion that we saw taken a couple of minutes ago from Scruffy is now under full siege. We see the response from the Thrums. I don't think they're going to make it in time, though. About a third of the base had been mined out, but overall, it's a pretty nice win in that moment for Team Ice, Hydraulics, and Magical picking it off there. Meanwhile, Santa is going for another sneaky base, and uh, the armies just kind of continue to roam and patrol about the map. But well, they just do, look at the army value alone. Yeah, it's advantage. It's advantage team fire. Yeah. Significant advantage team fire. In fact, hydraulics. Most of that though is because the, it might be undervaluing the upgrades on the mast hunters. Because these are fully upgraded mast hunters, which are a terrifying force. Especially when you're fighting into thrums. It's or rather when thrums are fighting into them. So this is the army value is a little bit misleading. Let's see now. Pressure put on by T Vice. The choice is either defend or attack. Looks like for now the Thrums are uh, this larger force from Scruffy is going for attacking the enemy army. They will obviously trade the space for it, however. Question is, Dom, do they look for more? The answer is yes. Pushing right in, Rain of Blood, full commit. Answering with Hydraulics' own Rain of Blood to hold this. Dropping Birthing Storm as well. Looking for the opening. Great hunt. Drop from Magical on top of that, so it's going to be very difficult for Santa and Scruffy to actually get vision here. But the Thrums may not care. Birthing Storm is popping for Santa Claus. Both sides. Oh, it looks boy. like Santa Claus is has making that advantage pay off Reinforcements. For them. Reinforcements are coming. They're slow, but they're here. Magical's Resonance. The question is, are they here in time? It doesn't seem like they can even get in position. The Thrums pushing farther ahead. Meanwhile, there are multiple forces of Magicals in the base of Walter Team. I don't know if this is going to continue in an extended base trade, but Dominic, we might be looking at it. It's one base certainly has gone down with all the focus from Team Fire. Team Ice forced to retreat from both of their prongs. It's definitely the advantage yep. of Team Fire. All their forces, a like, total of 9,000 army value inside of this base. I and mean, the Mass Hunters are doing a lot of work, but having been split up earlier did not do them any favors. All the Pyro has been drained. And Magical Hydraulics, they do still... They get expansions out of this. We talk about getting expansions on aggression and when you take map mm -hmm. control, but Hydraulics and Magical have decided to take expansions on losing. <laughs> take expansions as they're losing map control with the confidence that they can hold off the remaining forces. And that confidence oh, man. appears to be well placed. Yeah, these bone stalkers are going to be so strong. Will it be enough, though? Well, the resonants are going down one after another, and that's the primary threat. Bone stalkers yep. did go down, but their sacrifice was not in vain. Now, that being said, though, overall, you can check the value. Magical is lagging behind in terms of effective army in value and in its size. The supply as well. Resonance now. Can they be effective for Magical? They, a lot they of have to be. This production. is it. Yeah. This and the Bone Stalkers, is... they come in clutch to defend this. All the is left for Scruffy's forces. In the nick of time. Santa, or Scruffy rather, does have these behemoths, but Santa's basically lost everything in this assault. And once again, the hero units coming in from Hydraulics 
Last second, Masked Hunters. Resonance already in place. This defense, it's it has to maintain, but it's it is being maintained. It's, it's still it's still Leah. Yeah, it's still alive, right? There's still a shot here. Yeah. The blood was no, very set much up so. for the behemoths. There's a lot of very expensive units on the board right now in this offense. If Scruffy loses them, that is devastating to the offense. Although One of the behemoths is going to go down. The Thrums are struggling yep. as well. Mass Hunter is able to start taking those out the bone. The Looks like the Blood Wells are about the only asset that's really on the board for Team Fire in this area that's of any of any real note. Now, while this fighting is going on, can Blue and Teal expand to the western side, the northwestern side of the map? If they can, actually, oh, they can slowly crawl their way back. They're, they're trying the Blood Bounds in the northwest. Defending. Blood Bounds in the northwest are making that difficult. Oh, man, yeah, you're absolutely right, Hydraulics. Trying to find its way in, but there's just really no opportunity. It's up to Magical to weather the storm for these next couple of moments to let his teammate come back here. And those and that may prove actually too difficult. A lot. They're going a lot harder than I thought they would. Far harder. I mean, we're getting the Wraith Bows up pretty much out of desperation because something has to deal with these thrums. Oh. Aerox as well come in. Behemoths go nice. down. The thrums are wow. passed by. Backing okay, away still from the thrums. Still the behemoths. Yeah, that's interesting. Really trying to be conservative, right? Get the most value possible. Nice route. Maybe the Aerox coming in. No, not just yet. No, they I th they seem to be confident they can take them out with the Mass Hunters. And the Wraith Bows. That's a very high pres pressure situation. And see that confidence is pretty crazy, dude. Because it, it's actually doing okay. Magical, meanwhile, just expanding everywhere and just creeping his influence like, over the map. They've had the inch taken away from them, and they're still taking the mile. Yes. What the heck? Exactly. But uh, for Hydraulics, down to six supply in total. Workers on one effective base that is currently being besieged by Santa's forces. Almost looks like Magical is going to be running. That's it. No. He, yeah. Uh, Hydraulics throws in the towel. Then Magical. Maybe they think they can get a 1v2? No, they don't. Nah, no. Nah. So we are into the last game. We're in game five. Game five, in uh, <laughs> for every definition of the word, the most dramatic fashion possible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to break the game. Welcome to break the game in the first patch of the new production structure size or style. So map counter pick option now to magical and hydraulics. We've seen them play on a couple different maps, a couple different strategies. Uh, a couple of constraints due to optimizing performance at this point. Obviously, we yep. throw these tournaments uh, expecting bugs, crashes, etc. Um, and we, as a dev team, really appreciate the data because it lets us very quickly pinpoint what the issues are, the major ones. Um, but if we're looking at right now right. the limitation that is set, the ballpark that the players are playing in, they're going to pick Lost Province. Uh, currently, Orzum has a little bit of his kit, is not as impactful as it can be, and Ajari is not in play. So, likely we see Zol and Mala once more from all four players. Let's see if uh, they decide to mix it up or double stack. We get a double stack Mala from Team Ice. Moving it from and uh, Zol and Mala there. So three Malas, one Zol, locked in as well. Not really taking right. too much time to make their decisions there. They are good to go. Oh, that mean I wonder if I talk, oh, are they gonna go for are they gonna go for something? Because when you get double immortals, that's often a sign that you're gonna get something cheesy going on. And I realize that magical and hydraulics are not known for their cheese. Mm. But they might just. The Walter team, meanwhile, we have to remember, Team Walter, a.k.a. Uh, Scruffy and Santa Claus, are, in a way, the hometown favorites. Uh, this little sub-community of Yeah, looking at the fans. chat. Looking at the chat. Yeah, going yeah, wild yeah, right. for, they, uh, for Walt Team Walter. For them to come back through this entire tournament, initially lose the winner's final match against their current opponents, and then also reverse sweep at the same time. After playing <laughs> eight games? <laughs> right? Like, what, what a... Like, never before seen narrative in my experience when it comes to specifically this game for sure. Uh, and if you, in terms of rewriting this story, 
I would uh, be shocked that you could find someone who would be this creative. Well, thankfully, yeah, to be fair, like we had, you know, three crashes in a row and three different trees builds. Yeah, the in variety the is there. That worked is, out. In a way, we are stress testing the limits of the diversity of the game, and the stress test is coming up strong. That's what I'm saying. The mirror matchup, this, mirror matchup, this game are really well designed. Like, it's something that I, I. I appreciate it, and I, I say that because it gets constantly, like, it's a thing that a lot of people seem to not, seem to not really care for, but I think they are being slept on. Yeah, really, uh, do really appreciate the feedback, and happy to see it live up to, you know, the expectations, uh, both that we set up for ourselves, and then, of course, folks that we want involved in our community. Yay. Um Keep it rolling, man. I mean, we're game five here. Double expo, right? Both sides, both sides. I'm checking double the... Double expo, uh... double ETH. No, no ETH or double uh, production. No, 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 okay, we are going mm. hard on Masked Hunters from the looks of it. No ether. Not got a lot of options other than Masked Hunter. Interesting. That That's... Mirrors the other side, too. Both? Okay, there's... Yeah, right. Like, like, yeah, this yeah. is a hyper-aggression on both sides. Well, a hyper-aggression, but aggression on both sides. Well-funded aggression on both sides. Well funded indeed. Well, yeah. It's uh I guess an adaptation we might think to the uh supply constriction, right? The buildings now produce the same amount of supply, however, you cannot effectively build the uh simultaneously. You can't build the, the entire supply before. count at once. Right, right. Which you used to be able to. Yep. And uh, simply due to the nature of the way this tournament has played out today, this is essentially perhaps the adaptation of that, right? You go for multiple production buildings early simply to jumpstart your overwhelming army and just snowball that lead from there. That's what Magical has uh, been saying. Like, Magical has been talking, basically asserting that double production structure is the way the meta should go. Oh, and they've yeah. been, they're, they're putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. Tiny, tiny lead, right? But we've talked about inches versus miles in the past. Uh, that is both center power camps taken by Team Ice, and they are looking to attack. Going for it. No Neurosite, no upgrade, no offering, nothing other than pure Masked Hunters and summoning Malice Phantom. But hey, the extra Kittle are worth it. The extra health is worth it. Wow, just... the pressure Mala providing here just... Enormous. I love that so much. I just love how positional it is. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is such a good patch. I love the definition of the word fan or like the use of the word phantom too, right? Just because that that's what she is. She's just like spooky. You can't hit her, right? You can't force her away. And she is nope. constantly gonna be a pain. That early pyre advantage, very, very useful for Team IC. And without it, they just go into regroup. So yep. we did we did some damage, we killed some units, we don't wanna throw the advantage away. Go uh, respect that. Take a call from a different game, different company. Job's done. <laughs> However, of course, as we know, the work always continues. So, Mass Hunters. Well, that, that faction's not even designed, not even been arted out as far <laughs> as I know yet. Hmm. It's like three factions from now. Uh, well, not, I, don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know. It just, it just hasn't. The work will continue, but continue the work is. Well, it, right now, Dom, it's continuing here on the stream for these mass That's hunters. That's true. That is true. Yep. They, their work is not over. They get a bit of a rest time. They get to heal up, lick their wounds, get more, get some blood back. But then after that, it's back and, into uh, the blood mines for more blood. <laughs> so a pretty large clump, essentially everything that both Santa and Scruffy have, making its way downtown into the enemy base. Oh, here comes the flank, but it's Hydraulics getting... is a little early, just a couple of moments, but it might prove fatal. Okay, drop. Okay, Hydraulic, Magical dropping out the other favorite. So the upgrades could be coming in for Scruffy, and they are. Oh. A couple of bonus stars do get upgraded in the process, but a bunch of them are just becoming, well, becoming Kittle, getting a few extra kills off of, off of the Red Harvest, and now advantage is slightly in favor of Team Ice. Very, very slightly. Kind of depending on the Pyre Pull, but they do get it. Hydraulics, yep. they have enough Pyre to do whatever they like, just about. 
I do want to mention that uh, Scruffy as Zol, the only Zol player in this game of four people, is saving his pyre. So I'm wondering if he's really trying to bank for that um, ultimate, right? To turn yeah, off the, the light, hunt. so to speak. Um, it does change the dynamic. The pacing of the game is different, though, because we can see the early aggression from Double Mala from Hydraulics and Magical, as we have seen before. Uh, so if this game continues to play at that pace, it's kind of like, when Zol has that ability, does she use it? And how do these fights play out right now? Well, they're getting caught out right now. The turret, tower does go down. Thankfully, re reinforcements, or rather, Team Ice, thankfully, reinforcements are coming in. And, of course, Molo Phantom once again with the Red Harvest. Double Red oh, Harvest. Boy. Able to completely provide that front line. Annihilation. As reinforcements come through, Pincer out, yep. Team Virus Force. The residents are getting oh. trapped. Cannot do anything. The that is block. almost their entire army value. Gone in an instant as Magical and Hydraulics have no resistance moving into this natural expansion to wipe it down to the ground. Oh my lord, that is not what you want to see if you are a fan of the Walter team. They are going to be scrambling to defend these bases now. Offering from Mass Hunter has been popped. Scruffy still sitting on Pyre, but we talked about the effective combat value of the Pyre. Maybe not as readily apparent as you might see from a Mala pick. And uh, ironically, it does seem as if Santa was able to actually save most of his symbiotes from certain destruction by uh, pathing them away. And we do see that Team Ice will lay off the gas for now, but man, that army pincer, just a devastating blow. Yeah, but they gotta remember, it was, that was the key thing. They're laying off the gas to get the pyre back, but I gotta say that, that almost looked like it was gonna go Team Fire's way. Like, it was such a close run thing mm. for how they're gonna be able to because they were they were holding that turret, it was just the reinforcements came in at the perfect time. Yeah. To push back Team Fire's forces and Team Fire's reinforcements were a little behind the bridge. The residents hadn't come in yet, so they couldn't actually contest. But with that turret there, that was such a risky move that almost ruined Team Ice. That's where this game is at right now. Like whatever it goes, it's just small differences are going to make the victories. Now re-engage, everyone's fueled up. Good this to go. This is a fight that Red Team wants to take, but they are being completely concaved. And oh, not only, no. even with the even with the power ability, it's just not enough. It provides a bit of distraction. The resonance cannot do much when the concave is there. They rely on their Maybe. splash damage. Not, it's certainly close, Tom. It is close, but that splash damage is not working out for them. And the, their opponents are simply not clumping. All the resonance go down. Two more remain for Santa Claus in the next section of the fight. But that's simply not enough. Once again, Team Fire has lost their entire army. Team Ice will have to contend on Team Fire's expansions on the side, though. Taking a page from their opponent's book and expanding on the back foot. Yeah, quickly scouted out, however. Overall, the information there, the question is, will Hydraulics and Magical actually be able to uh, counter these aggressive expansions? Their Risky play. Army is... They do that, it goes out of position. Yeah, it's odd, right? Because they have the army in terms of size, sure, in terms of power, maybe, but they don't have them in terms of positioning, which means that, okay, like, how do you respond? You have to put the pressure down. Wrong. The enemy is expanding in multiple locations at once. You have to try and slow down the pace and keep it in your favor. We do see them going for a pyre camp right now and, and slowly creeping towards that area, but their opponents are kind of mirroring their option or their, uh, their actions on the complete opposite side right now. To be fair, a straight-up fight is going to be a win for Team Ice, more than likely. Yeah, yeah, the likely, likely. The Great Hunt's the main threat from Scruffy, though Magical does have Reign of Blood on the table. Oh, is this going to be just base trade? This is pure expansion trade. The 9 o'clock for the 3 o'clock, that's what we're doing. Mm. For the northeast corner is the is the wild card, Scruffy with the Great Hunt, pushing in on the 3rd. Not a whole lot actually in the way to stop this, mm. so that Great Hunt's well, going to have some success. Yeah. This is what they've been waiting all game for. They've got so many resonance to go with this push as well. It looks like a split response. Hydraulics pulling his troops back to defend, while Magical wants to continue the pressure. Okay, so can Hydraulics defend these bases, defend any further damage, and can Magical just destroy the remaining opposition? If both of those things are a yes, then Ice certainly with the game. But it still remains to be seen. It looks like Santa Claus and Scruffy, they're committing. They're committing hard. They have no way back. 
The first base has gone down. The first, second natural has gone down as well. Magical with the rain of blood inside their own base to help defend. Just to support hydraulics that much more. And yep. it's it's working out. Healing yeah, is through. Keep they, can keep they can keep refreshing, keep pushing back. The defender, the attackers have kind of broken formation. While at the same time, Magical, having taken out the natural expansions, seems to think this is enough. They're going to fall back. But they did the damage. They, I mean, they got rid of three bases from their opponents for... You know, one of their own, ultimately, that is a huge economic swing in their favor. Three safe bases, too. Yeah, um, there's a little bit of hesitancy from uh, Magical, though. He wasn't sure. He wasn't really able to get up to the ramp, right? It was a risky proposition. He decided not to go for it. He did obviously take the two natural expansions, and now he's getting much more support to continue the pressure. Unfortunately for Hydraulics, though, his... Ooh, Army not strong enough down. to defend that base. And uh, ice, every single time they get an advantage, no matter how it looks, there's always some kind of answer out of the Walter team. Every time. Has been so far. This time, maybe different. Having no natural expansions, the Walter team, and no mining in their northeast corner, the Walter team is starting to run dry. They only have one base each. So that economy advantage is going to turn around to Santa Claus, dropping the rain of blood to try to save their forces. But it's going to be, oh, it's going to be enough. It is going to be enough. It's going to push Magical back. The Red Harvest simply isn't, the double Red Harvest isn't quite enough to provide the healing, provide the kill pressure. Not when there aren't enough small units to become kill. And that doesn't matter for Hydraulics, though, as they take out the Northeast expansion, leaving the Walter team with only their main bases to their name. Yeah, only the main bases right now. It's uh, funny to look at their expansions, right? They really didn't get much work done. Only a 2,000 alloy taken from either. The commitment here, the residents have set up. This could be the finishing blow if the it's wall is down. But it's yep. being surrounded. This is not looking good for Team Fire. Santa Claus losing most of their army value. And that's it. That's the yeah, game. Yeah, Hydraulics it. and Magical, they take the tournament. 3-2 wow. in the grand finals. And what a grueling finals it was. Congratulations to Mavsko and Hydraulics. Well done as well to Santa and Scruffy. Uh, really made it a crazy game, crazy match, crazy tournament. Uh, no shame in losing to the best. And ultimately, Dom, we had a patch a couple days ago, and it we has did. certainly shaken up the meta. The, team, the players really rose the challenge of getting just into that meta. Like, they, they knew... They had to figure it out. They had to build it back up, and they did. They had to build up how they knew what they were doing. Very impressive, man. Just Magical and Hydraulics 2 essentially facing a reverse sweep scenario, right? They had exactly. a 2-0 lead. And it's interesting, too, when you have a winner's bracket advantage. Uh, the one game that they won initially had been granted in a way, right? They earned it, but it was also kind of given. So they only won one actual game to put them up 2-0, and then their opponents started gaining some serious momentum. However, mm. not enough. The comeback was not to be, and uh, they were able to uh, hold them off and take the win. Like I said, it was a bunch of tiny little things. It was all these tiny little... Yep. Because the game was super even for the first five minutes. But the equilibrium just went in their favor, and Santa... And while Santa and Scruffy were able to expand, the fact that the expansions were scouted out and stopped just cut it. So that was that, and that will be the tournament. So thank you to Simus for handling organization and helping co-commentate. And thank you to all the players who joined in, because without you, there is no tournament. Mm -hmm. Be sure to... We do, we do have a break the game next week, right? Uh-huh. Yep, yep. Okay. We'll continue. So be sure to join that next week. The Discord, which I'll be linked in the chat, is is where you find the tournament information and also where to find to talk about stuff so you can join that up. And we'll be happy to see you guys next week in the 1v1 Break the Game Weekly number 11. But for now, this has been Break the Game Weekly number 10. I've been Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. You can find me at Dominic Casts. Seamus? Uh, yeah, at Seamus A. Twitter, Twitch, don't run the stream anymore. YouTube, question mark? I don't think so. Twitter, all right. or just in Discord. And that is it. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, all.